everyone, how are we doing today? Welcome to twitch.tv forward slash ice cream applause. My name is Graham Day, and yes, I do look a year older because it's been my birthday. But anyway, enough of that. Welcome in. My name is Graham. This is the man that we call TV. Arid. Hello. Good weekend, babe. Yes. <laughs> Your audio is crackling again. Fuck's sake. B R B. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know of any good tunes, um, so I'll start with this one. Thank you for the. Think, having fun. Tis the season. Love and understanding. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, ice cream fans. Are we back? How do we carry on? Uh, we should be back now, but Bibby isn't. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? This is all going wrong. Uh, do you know what? To be fair, I should have known there was a, a Streamlabs update this morning. So, so yeah, that, that's probably the reason why. There he's back. Yes, there we go. Is the mic fine? Is it okay? Uh, I know you've just been subjected to Christmas tunes and you will enjoy it. It's fine. If you... If, if, <laughs> Uh, pl please no, Bibby says West. How are we all doing? Is the mic good? Is the mic good? Do you know, let me just have a quick check. That's better. Doing is the mic nice, nice, nice. Good weekend, Bib. Is what I asked, uh, and then you kind of threw me off with your yes, but didn't realise the world yeah. capitulated. But that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good, man. Played some golf. Everything was all peachy. Um, I got a, little, a bit too pissed on shows. Uh, I don't know if shows in here. He's probably still not recovered from Saturday night, but it was. Uh, <laughs> It was his birthday over the weekend as well. Um, so he had a, like a, a, a surprise Discord call with myself. Uh, and I apologize for all the people that was in there that I don't know. But I think it was a lot of people that he went to uni with. So we had Nico, uh, Ravin, myself, Pirate, uh, and obviously Show, and then a load of his uni friends. So I got a little bit too pissed um, on that. But apart from that, yeah, everything was good. Tell me about your weekend, Graham, because it was your birthday as well. I don't know if anybody knew that. It was a Twitter's best kept secret. I'm going to say you just said then it was Show's birthday and you had a bit of a surprise. Well, a surprise for you guys. It was my birthday last week. And there, you, <laughs> there you go. It was my birthday. Oh, actually, speaking of surprises and birthdays, this was a birthday present I got given. Northern boys love gravy. So, yeah, thank you to uh, Kelly and Damien for the t-shirt. Very much appreciate it. I know you're probably not watching, but there you go anyway. Thank you very much. Um... My weekend consisted of, other than us playing a bit of Fortnite on the Friday afternoon, no yeah. video games whatsoever, because I wasn't really in a state that encouraged looking at a bright screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love, you love to see it. <laughs> so yeah, me and Danielle ate like kings and queens. So on the Thursday night, my birthday uh, was, no actually, when was my birthday? My birthday was the Thursday. On the Wednesday night, uh, we had Northern Soul. So if anyone's ever been into Manchester, there's a place that does like grilled cheese sandwiches called Northern Soul. And it's it's a really simple food, a grilled cheese sandwich. But you can mm -hmm. you can get cheese on toast and then you can get cheese on toast. And this, this their stuff is badass. Anyway, it was basically a Christmas, like a festive uh, grilled cheese sandwich. So cheese, turkey, um, onion bits, gravy, some like pig in blanket lollipop Thing that you stick on the top anyway class smash that on the on the wednesday night thursday morning we had dishum uh uh breakfast so dishum is um i don't is it is it a mixture of cuisines or is it just like indian cuisine i don't i know they do like an indian english breakfast fusion kind of thing which is what we went for previously mm. and it was basically breakfast nans yes uh, bacon and egg nan breads uh for breakfast, then uh, we oh, did, did we have dinner? Or did, or did we miss it? I can't remember. No, I think no. I, I, later on in the day, anyway, I had my favourite burger ever, uh, which is called the Bada Bing from that burger place in uh, Manchester. It's basically two uh, a double cheeseburger with three Italian meatballs and an Italian cheesy sauce with Parmesan cheese and and gooey stuff. Yeah. Class. So I had that. Then had an absolute wedge of homemade chocolate cake. Uh, and then spent the next two days like with pure heartburn, but worth it. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. And then, yeah, a bit of McDonald's for recovery food yesterday, as, lo as well as Greg's. So McDonald's and Greg's in the same day to help recover from the weekend. Have you had a festive bake yet? Uh, no, 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 no. Not that, Amazing. I'm, not, not that I'm against them. I'm just, I, I like them. I just, I, yeah, I wouldn't go out of my way to get a festive bake. Because I, I had one yesterday for the first time this year. Amazing, um, I love them. Was it as good as was it as good as you wanted it to be? 
Yes. I remember, I remember tasting it uh, yesterday and thinking, oh, this is as good as it was. Like, I think they started releasing like two or three years ago. I remember still working at Findel at the time when they released them because they had that. And then the Subway did their festive subs as well, which are, I haven't had this year. I don't even know if they're doing them, but they was top tier as well. Uh, they had all the trimmings, turkey, stuffing, cranberry sauce, the lot on theirs, and it was amazing. But yeah, I, I haven't had one of those yet. <clears throat> but the festive bake was everything that I wanted it to be. <laughs> well, we uh, woke up yesterday after a, uh, a heavy night on the sauce on, on Saturday. Yesterday morning, I was telling BB before we went live. Woke up, me and Danielle, absolutely rough. Um, just eat some uh, Greg's bacon butties, sausage butties, brews and stuff. It still felt rough. Went back to sleep for a couple of hours. Woke up a bit later on and then... Uh, Went to collect uh, Chloe and had started the McDonald's delivery. Yes, nice, nice, nice. Well, collection, actually. We've got McDonald's. but And then we put the tree and stuff up, so the house is Christmassy now. Um, although, I do need to get some Christmas bits for in here because it's it's nice and illuminated, but not festive. So we need to fix that. Anyway. Oh, that's why I'm wearing a fit Christmas. Okay. Well, well, I've got Northern Boys Love Gravy, and Christmas, you can't have Christmas without gravy. So I'll say that's festive. Yes, nice, nice. <laughs> I can't wear this outside the house now because it's far. I was going to wear it yesterday, but it's just far too big for me. It's yeah, so, it's it's seen its day. It's definitely a stream jumper now. Christmas jumpers are meant to be massive, so that's good. That's good. Yeah, no, but I'm already massive. I don't need to be looking even massive. <laughs> Is that a word? It's, it's fine. It, massive. The extra space just makes you like look. Like you've lost it, lord. So it's fine. <laughs> use it. Use it. Yeah, I look like an American, like a a hip hop artist from the 90s wearing oversized jumpers and t-shirts uh, yeah a fresh white t-shirt that goes down to your knees like yeah, straight straight it. out of the wire yes yeah. uh, anyway cool. welcome in everyone uh if you have your fresh oversized t-shirts then please feel free to let us know <laughs> in the chat you can do that right now just as gagad has done and he's been here for a while good morning gagad how's things dude uh lake welcome in dude steel bonsai welcome back bonsai uh samaldo crackly audio chaps i appreciate the uh the, the mentions we got it fixed got it fixed hopefully fairly quickly um <laughs> that's better g perfecto whose birthday I, I, I don't know if you know this but it, it was uh, okay you know you know it's fine it's, it's mine it's mine bibby's though this week so my birthday last week bibby's two days time not tomorrow yes. day after bosh get in wednesday don't worry i'll let you know i'll let you know guys when it's my birthday yeah 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 um mr gary clark says morning shaggers i'll read i'll read um for anyone else that is here feel free to drop into the chat you don't have to but you can do we welcome it if you do for those of you who don't know as mentioned my name is graham this is baby we are ice cream uploads and in true ice creamy fashion this is the scoop the uk's number one video game podcast even if we do say so ourselves we're going to bring you the biggest the best and the breaking stories from the world of video games and we're going to give you our thoughts and impressions on those stories and we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions in return. It's important that you do. We go live each and every single weekday at 10 a.m. right on the dot. <laughs> Ish. If you believe Ish. that, you believe anything. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> uh, on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. Uh, so feel free if you join us live to get involved in the chat. And it's important that, that you guys do that because we turn this into a podcast, a video for YouTube and an audio podcast for iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So if you are in the chat, use your voice on behalf of everyone else watching and listening on demand a little bit later on. Nice, nice, nice. A um, couple of things to mention. One of them is just a final shout out. We did have exclamation mark giveaway, which was our celebration for hitting 2,000 followers. Um, thank you very much to the guys at 2K for getting involved. Speaking of which, uh, there we go. Mr. T is in the chat. Thank you very much for the guys at 2K for getting involved and backing us with that. Appreciate the support very, very much. Thank you very much. Um, to confirm, Epic Skill has uh, won those prizes and we are sorting out getting him his bits sent over including his uh, muscle moose package we are sorting that by the way epic skill i don't know if you're here you might not be it's 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 late i think in australia now although you were speaking to me a couple of hours ago um uh your prizes from muscle moose will be inbound it'll just take a while to get there obviously from the other side of the world but it's fine this is what we're international on, on ice cream uploads the other thing to mention is exclamation mark cyberpunk today is mm -hmm. the day one person will find out they won't get the game today because it didn't come out for three days but you will find out that you are getting the game today one person who is a subscriber uh, today you have to be a sub today at the point of the prize being drawn and you have to be in our discord if you're a sub and in our discord you will be in for a chance to win a copy of cyberpunk on the platform of your choice so if you need to re-up your sub that's fine you can do it do it now 
now, do it now. Because we'll do the draw a little bit later on in the Masters of the League stream. So yeah, just a reminder. Nice, nice, nice. Obviously, you don't have to. There's no pressure to sub, but that's just one way that we can give back to the people who do support with subs. So there you go. There you go. Um, so Wednesday is Happy Bib Day. Exactly. Happy Bib Day. Hey. And West's next week as well. Hey, December's the month. Yeah, um, all the shaggers in December, mate. All the shaggers. <laughs> Uh, Mr. T says, Graham, a lot of people were saying the dollop with Bibu last week was the best ever, but I wasn't an having any of it, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's just, we can't call it the dollop because it, it should have been the dollop with the dollop. I don't know, I've said that before, but there you go. Uh, no, I, I tuned in. I want to say I tuned in. I didn't tune in. I tuned in in terms of um, Danielle got the go live notification on her phone and went, oh, look, there he is. And it was just Bibu in the center of the screen. It was like, oh, bless him and then then carried on getting massive with all of the food and drinks so yeah how did the dollop go babe was it good uh yes it was uh, as yeah i think so yeah it's, it's really weird actually because obviously it was just me talking to the lads that was in the chat but obviously people who are listening to a podcast services just be like i'm listening to some bank union fucking geezer <laughs> talking for 40 minutes you're all right <laughs> yeah, you're all right guys yeah welcome to the scoop more like the dollar <laughs> uh, speaking to obviously the guys that are in the chat as well so that was that was quite weird but yeah i mean i think it's i think it served the very small purpose that i had of keeping the spot hot and giving people what they want to know for the day um but yeah, apart from that, I'm very happy to be back doing it alongside someone. So there's obviously two perspectives rather than me just screaming at people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing is, you say you kept the spot hot. I mean, that's what she said. Uh, at best. Oh, no, it definitely wasn't. I mean, looking at the events going down the side of Streamlabs, I mean, all of the uh, subs and resubs last week. So <laughs> do you know what? I mean, we don't do it for the money, but at least once a week now, Bibbs is just going to do the dollop on his own, so we can get all your all your cash. Give us the cash; it's fine. I'll definitely learn a tune. If anyone, if everyone can guarantee that they will drop a sub on Friday, I will learn a tune on El Guitar or behind me. Uh, that tune is is gonna be Seven Nation Army. There we go. <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's jump into some news. Let's jump into some news. Before we do that, let's catch up with the comments. Uh, Bibby is that big of a celeb that everyone in Manchester celebrates his birthday. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Uh, Madge says, where's my daily dose of the dollop? Uh, he's, he's, he's called Bibby and he's just right there, mate. <laughs> oh, that's El Fat Bastard. That's my <laughs> and you need to link your Discord to your Twitch account. Absolutely, West. So link your Discord and your Twitch. Because um, if you don't, Discord doesn't know you're a sub, uh, so make sure you've linked those. Um, that is a big thing. I think a lot of people, even though we mentioned that about a million times, a lot of people don't do that. So you, the odds of you winning are actually really high in terms of mm -hmm. um, online giveaways. Usually, like one in a million people of winning, like a a, a cyberpunk related spatula or something that you don't really want, but you know it's it's, it's, it's free, so I'll enter it. Whereas the odds are usually pretty high of winning ours compared to other things. Um, I'm still waiting for the day where someone gets like two or three wins from the uh, the sub draws, and there's still people that haven't won any of it, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I... it's going to happen soon, and I mean, there's usually up to forty subs, so it's quite a low percentage. Uh, sorry, it's quite a high percentage of people being able to try and win stuff, but eventually people are going to start winning more than once. And it, as disheartening it as it is, it's a completely random draw. So, <laughs> well, I like it. well, you guys get to see it. We do the uh, spin wheel on on the stream later on. So yeah. you'll see, you'll see. Uh, officially a top thirty pro club striker now says ads. Um, uh, on what? I mean, most people would see that as FIFA, but I'm not sure. <laughs> this this is this is ads on separate game that he's only made with him and thirty people. <laughs> I'm officially in the top thirty. Nice. Uh, oh, hero. Wes says, just realised, I don't think I've ever seen Bibby without a hat on before. Uh, have you had a trim, Bib? I did last Thursday, so I'm giving you a small preview now until in a week's time when it goes back to wearing a hat again. I like the fact that people can only see me with a hat. Where I'm not wear, uh, only see me with just a hat on, which is perfectly fine. I'm more than happy with that because it means I have to do my hair less. But today I haven't really done it. I've just swept it to one side. Um... 
So there you go. <laughs> Next week, join us for Bibby's Hair Chips with a... Uh... <laughs> Is it, what's well, it? Like a shagger, then what? yeah, absolutely. Come what was tips. The, uh, the fast show, Jesse's fashion tip. Today, I will be mostly wearing... Oh, today, I have mostly followed through. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> uh, okay, nice. Um, the dollop was so magical, it started snowing, says David. There you go. Um, Mad says, yeah, I, I hadn't joined the Discord before October, I think. Uh, I'm in and linked up now. Nice. Clearly on hey. Pez, Kappa. Uh you got damn right. you got damn right. Anyway, let's jump into the news. Um, we have a few stories to run through today. Um, and this one isn't about next-gen consoles, but it might be about next-gen consoles. We don't know. Uh, as Chrome is not playing ball. Nice. Uh, where is it? Where is it? There it is. Bosch. There you go. Uh, written by Andy Robinson at VGC. It says, Xbox will reportedly make an announcement at the Game Awards next week. So 2020's show is due to be streamed live on December the 10th. They did want to do it on the 9th, but it's Bibby's birthday and out of respect. Uh, and also the fact that knew they wouldn't get any viewers, they moved it to the 10th. So GG's, boys. We appreciate it. Yep. That. Wise. Absolutely. Microsoft will reportedly make an announcement at the Game Awards next week. That's according to prominent games journalist uh, Jeff Grubb, who made the claim during a Games Beat video stream on Friday, but did not share further details on what it could entail. Microsoft has shown that historically it's willing to reserve its highest tier announcements for the award show, such as last year's Xbox Series X console reveal. 2020's The Game Awards will be streamed live on Thursday, December 10th from th uh, Actually, let's jump straight through to 11.30 p.m. GMT and feature new trailers, game de uh, demos, and announcements, according to its organiser, Jeff Keighley. Microsoft itself has hinted that it could participate in the show's announcements by, prom by prominently tweeting to its fans to tune into the show on December the 10th. It also concluded December's Game Pass update with, See you at the Game Awards, friends! Uh, one game... That will reportedly not appear is Halo. 343 Industries has told fans last month Halo Infinite won't be shown at the Game Awards. However, the studio said it was hoping to provide a high-level update on the delayed game in the coming weeks before restarting the journey to release with fans next year. On Friday, organiser Jeff Keighley confirmed that EA will premiere a new look at Bioware's Dragon Age 4 during the Game Awards. Due to the pandemic, this year's show will not be filmed in front of a live audience, although it will feature world premieres, musical performances and guests. For the first time, the show will expand beyond Los Angeles, with this year's edition set to be streamed from studios in London and Tokyo, in addition to California. The, the event will also take place slightly earlier than normal to accommodate a global audience. Previously, European viewers looking to watch the show uh, live had to stay up until the early morning. I mean, the fact that they've only just started doing that now, good <laughs> Um I think the big opportunity that it pre presents to us is being a little bit more global in our rollout of the show. So normally the world comes to Los Angeles for the Game Awards physical event, and now we're taking the show to the world and being able to connect with more people and more places, Keely told The Hollywood Reporter in September. The journalist and producer uh, has already had a test run with a digital format via Gamescom's opening night live, and the Game Awards is set to introduce means for its audience to interact via social media and in-game experiences, he said. Whew, Bib. Mm thoughts uh when i when i first seen the headline i genuinely thought it would be something to do with halo like we're going to see something else to try and make up for the shit show that shown us last time obviously that i think they've learned from that and decided that keep halo at arm's length until they've actually got something that they can show us i have genuinely no idea what it is that they could be showing us does it mean that we're going to get i'm sh I th i'm sure i featured i mean it was only like four days ago i'm sure i featured something about fours are potentially time? being yeah. shown um so is it something to do with that? Are we going to see something early doors? I am genuinely have no idea. Everything to do with Xbox at the moment seems hit and miss in terms of what it is that they're going to be showing us. And uh, they've kept quiet in terms of, again, what it is that they're going to be showing us game-wise. So I genuinely, I'm at a loss as, as to what it is. It can only be good news. It has to be good news. Um, we've had the console launch. It was a very good launch for them. Um it's just always the games that let them down. It's always the games. It's just few and far between. Um, you want to buy a console for the games, but if I can buy a console that has the same games elsewhere, then why would I need to buy that console? It's all about the exclusives, regardless of... I don't want to say regardless of what anyone says, you buy a console for the exclusives. That's the reason why PlayStation did so well last time. If you can't play exclusive games on a particular console, that then becomes a little bit more difficult. But... 
I, it's got to be good news. It has to be good news. We can't hear something else. The good news can't be a new game coming to X, but, uh, to Games Pass. It can't be. That cannot be the big announcement. We've got a massive announcement, and it'll be... <clears throat> a game that you can play elsewhere is now free. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's, okay, great, great. I mean, that will appeal to a lot of people that don't, that don't buy all the games and, and stuff. Yeah, nice. Um, but it's not, it's not the headliner. I mean, the, yeah. the key thing to mention is, uh, like, where did it say something along the lines of Xbox... Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, Microsoft has shown that historically it is willing to reserve its highest tier announcements for the award show. If we get highest tier announcements, exciting. I mean, having Forza um, or or Forza, depending on what frame of mind you've caught me in. If you get a racing game, um, then yeah, not not that there's anything wrong with a racing game, but that's something that has been rumored. That is something that we've spoken about, and that we've spoken about the difference between uh, Forza Motorsport and Forza Horizon. Which one are we going to get first? And we were covering that just last week. So if we get that in there, yeah, it's nice, but it's another annual release, not yeah. or, or or near annual release. I don't know if you technically call them annual releases, but it's kind of more of the same. Something that's been spoken about, and it's not really the big caught off guard sort of. <laughs> didn't they expect yeah. that? Um, so yeah, it's, Halo is not gonna be Dragon Age Four is in there, and it, yeah, I kind of feel like even if we did get a look at Forza that we've not seen before, and even if we did get Dragon Age Four and some more stuff comes to Game Pass, be that Bethesda stuff or not or whatever, um, yeah, that's that's not gonna be like ooh Xbox stuff, yeah. yeah. I don't feel it justifies the need for the see you at the Game Awards and and the all the other teasing bits that lead up to it. Um, if that is the case, um, I would say that would remind me of Xbox's first game showcase where they were talking about it's time to change the game. We're going to be really changing the game with the games that we're showing that change gaming for gamers with games that have changed. And then it's like, actually, uh, you were talking about all these games that were going to be changed and now we could see the gameplay and none of it was gameplay and you really kind of hyped it up and what you hyped didn't really match what was going to be there. So... So if they're doing all these tiny little bits and they're meant to just be little G-ups to, yeah, we've got stuff, but they allow the, the conversation to roll on and they don't manage expectations, then, yeah, I'd be disappointed. Like we are covering it now. Our lead story is that Xbox is going to be at the Game Awards. And if they don't come with something big now uh, and they've yeah. not managed expectations, then I think it's just kind of the same again. So, yeah, hopefully they will have something big. If they do have something big, thoughts on what it could be. I mean, Gary's just said there uh, about Fable. I would love them to bring out a new Fable. I think, I think that would be a massive step in the right direction because it's not a yearly title release like you mentioned before. Um, that's why people get so hyped about the the likes of Gears of War and Halo. They're not games that come out every single year. They're not something that they expect to be seen around Christmas time. So a new Fable would be fantastic. Um, I think it would look awesome on the new console as well. Um, also, Mad just put Bethesda gave a Microsoft an exclusive to the trailer for uh, for Elder Scrolls. Again, that would be absolutely amazing, like a world first, and shows us a little bit of what the storyline is going to be. But I reserve judgment on that because I don't think that that's going to happen. I think it's far too soon. I don't think we're meant to be seeing that until twenty twenty three. Um, so we've still got a long, long, long time before we see anything from that. So I don't think it'll make much sense for them to be able to show something now. And then it could change dramatically over that time. We've seen games go through much more dramatic changes in such a short amount of time. Um, so that, I, th I think, don't makes that much sense. Um, but yeah, a single-player experience probably would be the best shout. But I also think if they try to big this up as being a massive new announcement and it turns out to be something that's a bit of a damp squid and then PlayStation bring out something in terms of, I don't know, a Last of Us 2 PlayStation 5 enhanced gameplay or just a brand new IP altogether. Uh, a look at God of War 2 or something like that. That would... Ragnarok, yeah. That, yeah, uh, that, that would... would blow anything Xbox out of the water. And it's kind of like, well, you've got to do something big with the next one because this was your big chance. You've hyped it up. And then it turns out to be... It doesn't turn out to be a bigger announcement than what the competitors have. I mean, that's all... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? That's all personal preference as to what you deem as being a massive, a bigger announcement. But... It needs to be something game changing. You brought a new gen console out. It needs to be game changing in every sense of the term. Yeah, I know. I agree. I mean, like I say, in fairness to Microsoft, they haven't really hyped it up, but they haven't not allowed people to get 
hyped either uh, in that sense. So you can you kind of, I mean, it's always difficult. You don't want to squash people when they're getting hyped. If someone's getting excited for your yeah. product, you don't want to go, actually, chill out, mate. Uh, don't do that. Uh, you want the hype to keep coming. So, but there is an art to allowing people to, well, to, like I said, to manage expectations. That's the point of this, where you're crossing over between social media into community management. If you don't manage that community, they can put two and two together and get 4,356. Yeah! And then when you start your show and they're, 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 they're there with their notes and it says 4,356 and you get two and two and it comes up to four and they go, yeah, that's the first number. And then you go, no, it's, it's literally just four. And they're like, but we've got it 4,300. Fuck, okay, our expectations were a long way off. This is just not what I wanted it to be. I mean, it's nice in its own self, but it's not what I was expecting it to be. And if Xbox don't do that... Um, then I'll be disappointed because we've already seen that once this year already. Oh, Bibby's got to let the cat in. Cat cam, yes! Jump on the windowsill. Get on the windowsill. Get on the windowsill. Yay! <laughs> uh, cat cam, absolute cat cam. Love it. Things you love to see. <laughs> Every single time. You know what she's going to do? She runs in, jumps up onto the windowsill. Oh, Every oh. single time. Go get him, get him, go on, get him. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so, I mean, I think... Fable, yeah, potentially could be. Uh, Fable has been developed by Playground Forza Horizon Peeps, so I expect it to be amazing, hopefully, says Gary. Uh, let me jump back up through the chat because I've seen there's been quite a few comments. Um, uh, da, 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 oh. uh, the dollop with a side of scoosh. <laughs> um, Microsoft's big announcement is that they're purchasing the scoop. Uh, Graham has been hinting at uh, with his Xbox t shirt recently. I mean,. Do you know what? I will do a not. I will do a non-PR answer and and categor categorically deny those rumors. Um, the scoop may be purchasing Xbox though. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that, uh, that we're big enough to put. I mean, they, they threw out what a few billion for Bethesda. I'm not saying that we've got a few billion lying around or whatever. But yeah, we might we might be buying it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, if only, if only, if only. Um, Jeff is now Graham's Xbox X boss boss. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> uh, he says he was off for his birthday, but it was actually in long uh, Microsoft Teams calls with Big Phil Spencer. Yeah. It, it was literally just Phil going, Graham, I don't get how you don't get this. Okay, can you say X box? Yes. Can you say boss? Yes. Can you... <laughs> now, now put them together. X box, box, boss, boss, box, box. No, okay, never mind. It literally just that over and over again. Still can't do it. So, yeah. Long old meeting. Um, uh, did you hear about the voting section of the Game Awards website getting hacked? The Last of Us 2 was winning in one of the votes, and these sad morons that didn't like the game apparently hacked it and put all the votes on Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, they managed to get it back to how it was before it was hacked, apparently. Do you know what? I didn't actually know that. I didn't actually know that. I, um, I did see uh, uh, early doors this morning. The Last of Us was trending because it was the basically the player's vote, or whatever they call it, the public vote, and there is some horrendous vitriol like there's some people that are just so against the last of us that it's trending because half of the people are going this is well it's not even half i mean i might i've not fully thought this through so let's go into thirds i might i might need more bits afterwards but you get a third of people going this game shouldn't be game of the year it's ridiculous that it is game of the year some people going uh, the next third is like no it absolutely should be game of the year it's an incredible game definitely worthy of game of the year and then you oh mr Tharian drake Welcome in, dude. Welcome in. Hope the stream has been wonderful. We are just talking about uh, Xbox being at the Game Awards, and then we've made a little bit of a tangent into The Last of Us, um, which is up for Game of the Year. There's five games that are in um, in the bracket, so there's... Uh, I can't remember them all. I can remember three. Um, Hades, The uh, Last of Us Part Two, and Ghost of Tsushima. I can't remember what the other two are. Um, but there's a lot of people pissed at the fact that The Last of Us is up there. So I was saying, basically, there's kind of like three separate areas of the audience. There's those that are pissed that, that a game should be up there because of the in-game messaging, and I don't agree with it. It shouldn't be Game of the Year at all. And you've got some people going, absolutely, it should be. It's wonderful. Stop being a little pissed ass. And then you've got the other third, which is like, do you know what? I don't think it's the Game of the Year, or it could be. I'm not really that bothered, but I am bothered by how triggered you are because of a game. So I'm going to vote for it anyway, just to piss you off. That's why if you search for The Last of Us... Uh, uh, to hashtag go through that that's literally you'll just get one of those three things that's i was just scrolling this morning mm -hmm. shit game doesn't deserve it wonderful game absolutely deserve it um i'm, I'm not asked but i'm just doing it to piss you off <laughs> so so yeah fuck me but but it literally it's a video game 
It's a video game. Whether you agree with it or not, they, that's that's perfectly fine. If it's not your game of the year, that's absolutely fine. If it's divisive, then wonderful. It creates conversations. Having those conversations is one of the best parts about having something like that. By by stopping other people's opinions from uh, and killing those conversations and rigging votes so it fits your agenda, then then you you haven't developed enough as a person yet. If you can't have a conversation and listen to other people's opinions, then maybe your own opinion isn't very strong. If, if it's weak enough that you can't have it challenged, then maybe your opinion's not strong yeah. enough. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Well, uh, their opinions then try to become facts, don't they? That's the reason why. Yeah, it's, it's a fact that I like this more. That Yeah, it absolutely is a fact that you like something better than somebody else, but it doesn't mean it's universally a fact. It's, it's funny when, when people put, like, stats on stuff as well 90 percent of people hate this game do they 90 percent of people and where did you get that stat from just because you've said 90 percent of people based on a number that you've roughly calculated in your head doesn't make it a fact 100 percent of people think that's bullshit <laughs> nice <laughs> and, and how do i know that because i think it's bullshit and i'm 100 percent of people whatever 100 percent of graham's think it's bullshit yeah that's fine 100 percent of me <laughs> Fine. Not even all Graham's, because other Graham's may differ, but but 100% of me thinks that's bullshit. Yes. Nice. There you go. Uh, let's job back up. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Peter M. Nowhere in sight. I mean, is Peter Molyneux... Does he have anything to do with uh, Fable anymore? Did he, did he leave the studio? I'm did, we not sure. cover, did we cover something like that a couple of months ago? I can't. I can't remember. Now this is where he just moonwalks onto the stage in like the London, <laughs> yeah. the London arm of the uh, the game awards, just like. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Mr. Barry yeah, Drake says, well. "Baby got a haircut." I did. I did get an haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you say? We got a follow. We did. Hisoka's yeah. disciple. Thank you very much for the follow. Um, and Thank I did. You. I think I shouted out West. Thank you very much for the host. If I didn't, then then suck up. <laughs> we got it anyway. <laughs> no, Jackie, thanks, West. Love you, mate. Uh, we need Scott Steiner maths for this. S Scott Steiner maths? I, I don't get. I, I don't get the reference. Uh, I don't know it. Okay, Robert Daniel, thank you very much for the uh, the host as well. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Uh, Alpha Rack says Larry and Drake sent me here. Sexy girl game was fun. Um, we we call him Bibby, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Sex because I have jokes. <laughs> Sexy girl game. What is this? Tell me more. Tell me more. Um, Chapa says uh, sixty-six and two-thirds chance at, at sacrifice. I don't know what's happening in the chat anymore. <laughs> 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 I, I have a couple of days off my birthday, and I don't know what's happening anymore. How does Twitch work? <laughs> what have I done to these people? Like I've, I've just I've broken them. <laughs> uh, Sounds like Eurovision. What sounds like Eurovision? I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> uh, I love those statements. The comeback is usually, well, uh, me and my mates hate it. I mean, that's it. It's echo chamber stuff. If, mm. if, if me and all of my mates hate it, and there is a lot of us, there's six, and we all hate it, then it's absolutely t it's, uh, it's torrid. Yeah, all six of your mates, hey, wow, that absolutely speaks for everyone from every walk of life. I absolutely I, thank you for sharing that enlightenment with the rest of Twitter. Block. <laughs> Get in the bin. 90% yeah. uh, of the 10 people in the I Hate It Club hate it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, he has nothing to do with Fable now. Ah, oh, he's retired. Ah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there you go. I mean, Peter Molyneux coming back out of retirement. I mean... Mm, it's, I mean, it's not kind of, um, it's not, say, how can I describe this? The more modern gamer sort of personality, the people from studios are more people like maybe maybe the Neil Druckmanns and, um, I mean, I'd even argue that Cliff Blazinski is, is he even really in that modern uh, conversation because he's been out of it for a while kind of thing. Um, obviously, Kojima's and, and co like that would Peter Molyneux have the sway now? I mean, it's got to be a good 10 years since he was... Maybe not that long. Well, until Cliff brings back Radical Heights, then he's dead to me. Until he brings back what, babe? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you're playing the Radical Heights theme tune as we speak. The greatest battle royale that never ever got to see the full light of day. Uh, rest in peace. No, I've no idea. I don't know what you mean. No. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. 
Um, Mr. Robo Daniel, can we get can we get the Radical Heights drop music just put into PUBG just for just for a couple of days? It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, that'll be amazing. Nice, nice, nice. Cheers. Um. Uh, it's like how dad used the joke I know it's true because I just made it up <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly um, uh, not hitman retire I might add <laughs> get out of here uh, Eurovision voting I assume uh, dog uh, ah yeah 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 exactly yeah yeah 100% um, that's pretty much what it is um, dog bathtub uh, bathtub book club <laughs> yeah uh, Clifford B is more like a games industry celebrity these days. Yeah, he has. I mean, obviously, Boss Key didn't go the right way for him, so maybe he would have been um, around there. And there is talk, there's always talk around uh, Cliff whenever there's anything Gears of War-ish. I think it may, may have even been earlier this year, Cliff Bozinski was linked to uh, Gears of War yet again. Um, I think he came out and denied it, maybe? I can't quite remember how, the, how it kind of fizzled out, but yeah, yeah, he was rumored to be coming back in to be the savior of Gears of War because Gears Five was good, but it didn't really go past the people that played Gears Four, um, and maybe not even that many more. So, yeah, he was he was rumored to come back in there, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, we'll put a pin in that. We'll put a pin in that. We'll move forward into the next uh, the next game. I mean, we were just talking about Battle Royale, so it's not uh a bad jumping off point actually as we jump into the next article speaking about jumping where are we dropping boys um don pepiat at bg247 says well we won't be dropping anywhere physical anyway not for the rest of the year as no physical Fortnite events have been planned for 2021 epic games confirms epic games has confirmed that physical Fortnite events such as Fortnite world cup will be held online only throughout 21 Epic said it has no plans to hold in-person Fortnite events next year as the coronavirus pandemic continues. Uh, there we go. The publisher noted that its desire is to hold online-only events for the foreseeable, and that extends to the biggest annual events in the Fortnite calendar, such as the Fortnite World Cup. Uh, okay, why? Is there a sentence missing there? Because it just says, of interest to visit to uh, as the start yeah, of it. it looks like it's dropped down. Like, it's it's dropped down. And he's forgot to put like it was going to be a part of the sentence above, and he's dropped it down to make a statement on his own. But he's forgot the first couple of words. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, with more expected as the season progresses, there you go. Um, so our intent is to eventually hold global in-person tournaments again. But our priority for such uh, such event is the health and safety of our players and staff. Epic announced via a blog post. With so much still unknown about what is practical and safe, we do not plan to hold in-person events in 2021, including a Fortnite World Cup. We will continue to provide online competitions throughout 2021 with the hopes that physical events in some form can return at some point in the future. The upside, uh, with seemingly fewer logistics to consider when it comes to organising physical events, the team will be able to focus more on setting up more online events throughout the year. The publisher notes that it looks forward uh, to featuring more weekly tournaments, unique tournaments and creative cups throughout the year. Season 5 arrived with a bang in Fortnite earlier this week, moving uh, on the narrative to change the island and introduce some more characters. Doom's Domain and Stark Industries have disappeared and have been replaced with Pleasant Park and Colossal Coliseum, for example. If you're curious about the uh, current state of the game, you can check out... All you need to know is the Mandalorians in it, and this is the way. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is the way. Uh, I'm currently at the point where I've got the Mandalorian and two bits of Beskar armor. So yeah, yeah, have that. Oof. Um, Great oh. style. Um, okay, so Fortnite will not have any physical events throughout 2021. Is that a surprise, Bib? Thoughts? Uh, well, th I know this is... Um, I, I put this in because I think this is the good jumping off point in terms of what the industry is currently... or where the current industry currently is at. Not only are Fortnite not doing any um, events this year, I've heard CSGO aren't either. So if you've got two of the biggest... Uh, one of the biggest esports games in the world, and then that's obviously CSGO... Uh, Fortnite obviously has massive esports, but it's the most popular, one of the most popular games in the world. We're just used to do different contrasting things. If they're not having any events this year, that doesn't bode well for the rest of the gaming industry, I feel. And I think that's the bigger talking point about this. Uh, the best esports game in the world and the, one of the biggest games in the world currently. Where does that leave the rest of the games industry in terms of events? It's gonna. I think 2020 has been a disappointing year for a lot of people. I don't see 2021 personally being that much different when it comes to events, concerts, especially in the UK where things are still on their ass. Um, 
I don't see this year being uh, next year being any different, if I'm being honest. And it's such a shame because we've missed out on so much this year. Not only in the video games world, people's concerts being cancelled and not being able to go down to the pub with your mates. Like Chris, Christmas Eve this year, I well Christmas Eve every year I go out with the lads. It's like it's always been since we left school. That's always what we've done. This year it's probably not going to happen, and that's highly disappointing for me. And I imagine the rest of the world as well. Well, apart from Australia, because they had a gig this weekend. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah. It, Champ they Chong full on gig. shared um, a tweet from, yeah, they haven't had any like cases for, what was it, eight months or something like that. Yeah. So they've just had a, a post-coronavirus celebration. And I'm here, like, dressed in a hazmat suit just to go to Tesco. <laughs> it's, nice. It's ridiculous. So I can't see next year being any different. Uh, it's it's interesting they put a statement of intent out so early, but I think they're thinking the exact same. They they don't want to risk their staff uh, and their community by putting on events, and it's it is a sorry state of affairs. There's a lot of industry workers, so you go to watch a gig. Not only are you going to see the band, but there will be, especially if you're at like the MEN or at a festival, there will be hundreds of people helping put stage lights on, do sound checks, uh, roadies that will set up the equipment do all the strobe lighting then you get the venue staff that that open the door turn on the lights make sure that the queuing systems are in place just run security clean the toilets empty the bins because the bins even though you don't think about it that one bin that you put your cup in gets probably emptied three times over the course of that one night because there's so many people putting it and all of those people uh have to be there to to make all of that and so it, it, it doesn't surprise me it it is a little bit of a shame. Not from, not from. I think Epic have made the wrong choice there. It's just a shame to know that we're still not going to be back to normal yet. Um, yeah. But it's also quite a blessing that it shows you how important video gaming and online video gaming is uh, and how far it's come. I mean, we know it's come a long way anyway because how much... How much did the world turn towards video games between April yeah. and June earlier in the year when everything was stopped? It was it, you were seeing pretty much every sports broadcaster was trying to figure out how can we do a football stream with footballers yeah. and do something for charity and and there must have been about twelve that I was aware of um, that yeah. had different footballers doing different streams. Um, not that there's any anything wrong with twelve. It's not oversaturation at all. When you've got nothing out there, absolutely, the more the merrier. You give people the opportunities to get involved. Um, and even last week, I was reading a YouGov uh, report um, about how video gaming stepped in to fill the gap for um, traditional sports and broadcasts and give people the ability to scratch various itches, be it just playing games, be it playing games socially, be it competing, or be it watching content video games have stepped in so it's good to see that there will still be a lot of that like it says it mentioned it as a kind of a negative that it's not going to be happening but the positive the way that they phrased it is uh the upside uh with seemingly fewer logistics to consider when it comes to organizing physical events the team will be able to focus more on setting up more online events throughout the year so yes a physical events a physical event is amazing i've been at i've run i've casted in uh, physical events i've done all of the bits with physical events and i absolutely love this this i love online events but there's very little that comes close to to being at a physical event when you see someone win their will title or bag themselves that massive check that's going to change their life just in the same way that being at a gig isn't the same as watching it as on uh, on the tv or being at a football match is is more immersive than being at home and uh, it's it's nice, but there is definitely differences to both. So it's a shame that it's not going to be there, but absolutely is a necessity, um, especially if you want it to be a spectator thing. I mean, we've we've seen a few thousand people at some football games over the weekend. We're definitely yeah. not we're definitely not there yet. And football. Did you see the Liverpool game yesterday? I didn't. That actually, cameraman no. was doing the cameraman was doing the the Anfield crowd dirty. So there was quite a lot of people that wasn't wearing masks in the stand yesterday, and the cameraman was doing his utmost. Is the best job he could do to try and put them on the big screen without it wearing one. There was some. There was one bloke who was just belting out, "You never walk alone," at the top of his voice without his mask on. And the, the camera was just getting like slowly zooming in on his face, picking him out. Let's have a look at his tonsils. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, see if you can see any Rona just sat on the end of it. Yeah. yeah. But like you said, that the bit one of the best esports memories I have was I wasn't even a part of it. I was part of the crowd and watching Gafera uh, at. Um, uh, Emirates yeah, at the Emirates in 2017 I think when he won two, um, 200 grand 
Yeah, and he would just he just broke broke down crying. Was he eighteen at the time? Sixteen. Sixteen, 16 years 16, old. Sorry, yeah. And sixteen year old winning that much. We worked it out. His dad um not actually i tell a lie that's slightly wrong um we worked it out that the average wage for someone in brazil was around eight thousand dollars um for an annual wage uh, where he was from the average living wage was eight thousand uh, dollars which is obviously nothing uh on the global scale and he went home with two hundred thousand dollars i mean that's the reason he fucking broke yeah. down he's like that's it that's me my family yeah. my parents just sorted now done fixed everything i've got yeah you, which is huge huge a 16 year old lad just literally just broke down crying on the stage and it was like it was it was really emotional like the the, the final was a good game um and it was just yeah giant a giant comedy check size check being handed out and then some 16 year old lad and his dad like literally having to scoop him up off the floor after just won two hundred thousand pounds that's what you get into the industry for that's what like it's the same as when someone wins a world cup in football do you know what i mean it's just I mean, see, I mean, it's it, amazing. It would have been things. an amazing situation to have been Guifera then, but I was stood yeah. off to the side next to Guifera's dad, doing the doing the the social media camera a bit, getting some uh, photos, basically taking pictures of ch- crying children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God, give me some more tears. <laughs> Show me the emotion. No, but like as a dad, it would have it, it would have been nice to be Guifera, but knowing that your kid has just done yeah. that insurmountable thing I mean, his dad was in tears as well that was just like absolute power mm-hmm. the emotion and the thing is guifera had been the year before in um milan on the stage in the middle of um like the terrazzo is it the terrazzo martini oh, no no is that... i can't remember the name of the square actually we the terrazzo martini was a terrace bar that we were in before, for the qualifiers and anyway, we went onto this huge uh, stage in the middle of the open square in milan Playing against us, Macabile, who's obviously ridiculous. Squiffera went like one or two nil up and then lost um, the final there to us, Macabile. So he got some money, but not as much. Uh, and it wasn't the, the bonus, uh, the prize pool wasn't as big as the year after. Um, so to be so close and lose it the year before. And I think he may have even gone down. Did he go down a goal in that final as well? And then came back to win it. Uh, it was just, it was huge. It was huge, huge, huge. Yeah. But that's what you put the events on for, for things like that. So some more people will still be talking about it years after the fact, but not knowing full well that we're not going to have those nice moments next year, especially for the, I mean, two, two of the big games that I mentioned there, that's just two games that doesn't bring into consideration Gamescom, uh, EGX. Uh, uh, are we, uh, well, there's, there might not be um, having the one in America again. Uh, why do we always forget the fucking name of it? E3. You know, that's the biggest one. E3. Fucking hell, I would forget about it because everybody else has. Um, E3 really? might not be having that next year either, so it's it's going to be a disappointing year again. And as I mentioned before, it, it won't see any physical gaming events at earliest June, uh, July 2021, and latest from Jan 2022. So it's going to be another rough year for the events industry in terms of, especially in the UK, no gigs and stuff like that. I can't see it happening. So I mean, we'll just stay, we'll have to stay positive for as long as we can, I think. There are some things happening, um, and uh, that Robert Daniel just slipped me a fiver to mention this, so I'll mention it. He hasn't, actually. <laughs> he hasn't. Uh, one, one of the esports that I tend to watch a lot of, surprise, surprise, is PUBG esports. Um, so I tend oh, to wait. watch... They have four different um, tournaments that run at the same time because they're all different regional tournaments. So uh, like there's the Americas, Europe, um, Oceania, and Asia. And I tend to watch all of them separately because, I mean, not only does it relate to my in-game stuff because I can win points and things, but I like PUBG Esports anyway. Anyway, PUBG Esports next year is having... uh, So they've had the Continental Series, which is a way to get around um, global esports. So if you have Continental... Just get everyone to play in Europe online. You don't have to have offline events where everyone yeah. uh, meets and so on. There's no ping issues. Well, there, there is, but there isn't. Um, but next year, they're having a global invitational, which they haven't done this year. They did last year. Uh, well, they had the PGC last year. Anyway, uh, so they have a global invitational event next year. And let's see if I can bring this on the screen. This is uh, this is just off the cuff. So this is um, not something that was planned to be put into the news today, but I'm bringing it in just as a bit of a, a comparison. Um so this the pub- show mate, we can do whatever we want. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So this is the PUBG Global Invitational S. Um and the S uh 
as it says here, what does the S stand for? Lots of things, actually. The S is for survival, as that's the core of Battle Royale. It also represents the new series format of PGI. It's supremacy, it's showmanship, it's a global showdown, and perhaps most importantly, it's safety. Um, so this is a team that will be taking place um, from February 2nd to March 28th, so over a long period of time, physically, next year. Um, but if you read through this, I mean, I won't go through it all now, but you can see their COVID-19 safety precautions. They're basically having to take everyone out like two weeks early so that everyone can basically get there and quarantine, make sure that no one's um, mm -hmm. uh, just coming straight off the bat from a plane through an airport and taking in all of the diseases in the world. And, and, and it shows you yeah. like to the extent that they've had to go through to be able to bring like effectively one content series out. That explains mm -hmm. quite clearly why Fortnite and the World Cup and all of that sort of stuff just can't be online because if there's not enough time, money, logistics in all esports to be able to deliver something of that size and that scale. So yeah, doesn't surprise me that we are seeing um, Fortnite taking another year to stand back and, and deliver the online content because yeah, the offline stuff, the amount of legwork in there to make that work would be huge. Would be huge. Um, jump back up then through the chat. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, chat's scrolling pretty far. Wow. Um, will ICU be co-streaming this year's Gamer Awards? Um, do you know what? I don't think we've, we've not had plans. With, is this Sunday? I, I won't be. So, yes, Bibs, be, Bibs yeah, will be, be uh, destroyed. So, birthday. So, no, no, no co-stream um, for the Game, uh, Game Awards because the Game Awards just don't consider our birthdays so you know i mean they, mo they, they moved it to the day after babies which is fine but you know a couple of weeks back boys i know it's christmas then but i mean what's more important our birthdays are christmas so yeah exactly i thought so uh casey dice oh, yeah true actually yeah i mean fair play to them um casey dice says i was enjoying it till all the good players came back i'm assuming that means Fortnite, and yes i agree <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, i've won one game uh in this season i've not been playing heavily towards winning to be fair i've been taking off the challenges yeah. trying to get the best car armor for my uh, mandalorian but yeah yeah everyone is like i can build slowly but yeah it's it's like if, whoever think of your stereotypical construction firm the one that comes to mind for me is mcalpine construction because they made huddersfield town stadium anyway it's like me there with my with my hammer and chisel and then i'm just facing Alfred McAlpine, who just builds an absolute <laughs> fucking diorama in front of me. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, Nightwolf Flame says, let's be a little uh, optimistic, though. Absolutely. Oh, I'm all for the optimism. Um, love the fact that we are still getting events. It's a bit disappointing that we aren't um, getting as much physical, but we are still progressing, which is nice. And progress is essentially making sure that we are in a better situation than we were previously. And yeah, we're not quite into the... the the situation we had before but in some instances we are better the learnings coming out of this for online esports and how to deploy them and how to be more reactive and get more content on the go well they won't disappear so yeah we'll go back to having physical events but there will be much more like much more industries much more broadcasters much more audiences open to the idea of competitive gaming or even just cooperative gaming not even competitive so yeah we will we will progress and it's definitely a good thing underneath it all um also lunky by the way 16 minutes ago thank you very much for the follow appreciate that um yep events won't be happening anytime soon according to my boss says gary uh i agree won't see any physical gaming events uh at earliest june july 2021 and latest from jan 2022 uh yeah anything that has an audience um i'm not sure if the, i mean I'm, I'm assuming the pcs uh well the pg CS. <laughs> what was it called? PG, PGIS. There we go. I'm assuming that won't have an audience at it. Maybe it could. I don't know. Um, but yeah, nothing that will be fully spectator ish yet. Not for a while. Uh, David says it's not that surprising because the government advisors said before the first lockdown was needed that public events should be minimized or stopped altogether until the fourth quarter of 2022 to prevent mass infection. Um, Steve Bonsai says, wow, that's amazing. And people say gaming is no good for anyone. That was in relation to the uh, Guifera comments as well. I say bullshit. Gaming is amazing and can do amazing things for people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Casey Dice says, I can't even win a tenner on an accumulator. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steve Bonsai said, I would love to be a part of things like that. Lol, crying children. <laughs> and Asim <laughs> says, I remember that. I felt like a right dick taking videos for social. Yes. And, uh, I know this kid is crying because he's overwhelmed with emotion. Can you get the camera right in his face? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, uh, I'm sure it was at that event at the Emirates in 27, I think. I think you were, you were, you were, you were there, you were there. Um, I miss EGX. Um, yeah, you were. That's where I met you for the first time, Gary. Oh, it might have been Pez Day the year before, actually. Uh, but you were definitely there, definitely there. Uh, yeah. Not Four Seasons uh, Landscaping. Uh, I don't know the reference. I mean, I know the reference for the uh, the Trump thing, but I can't remember what... <laughs> I don't know what it's linked onto. This is the thing with me going back to the chat afterwards, because I always forget what everything links to. And then people have to remind me, and then I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, uh, I won my first game of the season and was all hyped. And since then, uh, it's been it's all been downhill. Yeah. I th- Like, when you get down to, like, 1v1... like. In in Fortnite in particular, you can see when you're gonna lose it. Uh, at least like with in PUBG, if I'm playing someone better than me, I know I still have a chance. I just just doing quick peeks quicker than I usually would do. So a bit more rough around the edges with a snipe shot, I might just hit the headshot and win. Um, but in Fortnite, it's just nothing I can do. Some guys just build yeah. in. I I had one the other day, and some guy basically box uh, built a box around me, put a pyramid in the bottom of it and then put a roof on the top of it and then just kept like editing the roof and shooting me and then editing the roof back again like in a split second like bang 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 so it was it was kind of like it's like imagine having like the shooting fish in a barrel i was the fish in the barrel and him editing the roof is the equivalent of someone opening up the lid and shooting the fish and then putting the lid back down before the fish can do something back it was just i was just trapped and i was just like this there's nothing i could do there just i mean is that the one where before we ended up playing uh, and you just you, you just uh, it was on Friday and just went oh no it, it, <laughs> me it, and Lewis were just pissing ourselves it wasn't even that it, like, that's what you said you was like you could, they flirted it was it was me just going yeah I'm dead um but no it wasn't that was the night before uh I think but yeah it, <laughs> so I mean that enough. guy that guy was 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 a fucking hero as well he outbuilt me uh, on that one to be fair um but yeah I mean the one that I won I know if it's a one on one shoot fest I'm I'm usually gonna win those I'm. Uh, uh, a bit of an ego brag. I'm probably not going to win them all, obviously, but I usually win sh- one-on-one shootouts, uh, and and I'd, and I could build like a couple of ramps and walls. So this guy, the fact that he couldn't build anything, and I I know I'm good with guns, and I can my minimal building was better than his. Meant that oh, that's it. This game's in the bag, and he was crouch walking towards me as well. I was like, oh, still gonna kill you though. Still gonna kill you. <laughs> Give me that win. Uh, um, I, uh, the PDC are doing something like uh, this, uh, something like that for this last next year's Dart Championship. Uh, they're renting out a hotel in London for a month, uh, then busing everyone to Ali Pali and back. Um, yeah, I mean that's kind of the thing. You have to kind of build in those sort of like safety periods. Yeah. Um, usually, like usually, if you do an esports event, you need to get someone there one or two days earlier because they may be um, on a different time zone. Um, and they may have flown for 12 hours, so you need to give them a day to get the sleep, to acclimatise and stuff like that, but that's a completely... It's like different... Get uh, a kettle of fish. What's Danielle saying? Graham screams, I don't know what's happening. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Graham. Ah, when I, yeah, I don't know. Literally, that was it. That one, when the guy was building around to me, I even said to Danielle, I says, I'm fucked. I don't know what's happening. I literally, I, I'm just in this box, just trying to run around this little pyramid thing, just just chuckling away. I wasn't even angry because I knew there was nothing I could do. I'm the kind of person that when I lose a shoot, I'm like, fuck. Uh, do you know, yeah. GG's, GG's. My initial reaction is, I, I, I need to be better. I, I could have done something. I could have played that better or something else happened. It wasn't my fault or whatever. I usually try to find the flaw in my game or, or something else so that I can learn from it. And in that one, I was just like, I don't even know what to do. <laughs> uh, uh, did I, oh, Mr. T says, was great. sorry, had to share this. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Mr. T says, uh, not sure if I'm a fan of the new Fast and Furious plot. Let's have a look at this. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, gangs are breaking into fast moving lorries to steal PS5s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to read the article. I've seen this one before. They're all driving black Honda Civics with green neon ground kits. I know how it begins. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, let's have a quick let's have a quick look. You're a gamer. Uh Gangs are hitting lorries on the run to steal PS5s, a new report has revealed. Over the weekend, the Times paywall report that deliverers of PlayStations, TVs, cosmetics, mobile phones, and cigarettes have all been raided in recent months using a stunt known as the rollover. This involves gangs using multiple cars to box in lorry at speeds of up to 50 mph. One gang member climbs out, secured by rope, through a sunroof or modified hatch, then uses cutting tools or a crowbar to break into the lorry, climb aboard, and throw out the goods. That is literally the first yeah. five minutes of Fast and Furious, uh, the, the first one. It absolutely is. 
That's ridiculous. Mental. I mean, the, the effort there, going through that, cutting into a lorry and getting into the lorry and throwing bits out one by one. Thieves are usually like in and out, quick job. Like, this guy's just setting up shop inside. Like, la, 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 la. Another <laughs> PS5 coming through. Crazy. Crazy. Um, Casey Dice says, me and my mate uh, uh, have lost an embarrassing amount of uh, 2v1s. Uh, roadworks in Manchester get done quicker. Uh, I don't... True story. I, I don't know what that bit refers to. <laughs> no, it's, it's, talking, it's talking about having a shootout and then it's him, it's him and uh... one person and the, the one person has just melted them both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to be fair, roadworks in Manchester. And you know, my building is about on par with the roadworks in Manchester, to be fair. So yeah, I, I mean drawn out. Yeah. Uh, Manchester Council, if you if you know if you want anything building, then holler at your boy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um anyway, let's jump into the next bit of news. Uh Casey Dice says the new soldiers are OP as fuck. Well, do you know what? Speaking of soldiers, let's go into another game that involves soldiers. As Tom Ivan at VGC says Black Ops Cold War season one has been delayed. Avoiding a Cyberpunk 2077 clash. I mean, this this is where we do have to stand up and apologise because Cyberpunk have moved their game to the 10th. Baby's birthday is on the 9th. Yeah. Uh, so Cyberpunk's obviously coming out on the 10th. So we've already interrupted Cyberpunk. And now Black Ops has had to delay Season 1 because Cyberpunk is clashing. So basically, Baby's birthday has fecked up both Cyberpunk and Black Ops. So sorry, boys. Sorry, guys. <laughs> sorry. Um, a new Warzone map, multiplayer map, raid, and more arrive on December the 16th. Activision has delayed the launch of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Season 1. The game's debut season will now launch on December the 16th, rather than December 10th, as previously planned, avoiding a clash with the highly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077. CD Projekt's game, itself delayed on three occasions, would likely have taken some of the attention away from Black Ops Cold War Season 1's launch, with players and influential streamers having to divide their atten attention between the two juggernauts. Um... Do you know what? We'll, we'll leave that there. We get the gist of the rest of the article. Don't need to read too much further into that. Um, doesn't surprise me. When you've got heavy Black Ops Cold War players, like the Doc, uh, for example, his banner is and has been Cyberpunk for the last two weeks. He's clearly been uh, paid by CD Projekt Red to play that game intensively yeah. on the launch day. And if you've got him, and no doubt others that have been secured for a while, um, in the bag... I mean, you can just imagine the PR teams at Activision going, okay, do we have... Um, I'm trying to think of uh, people that play Black Ops. Or, say Shroud. Shroud or The Doc or or Tim the Tapman or whoever's been playing Warzone. Do we have all those lined up to play Black Ops on Season 1? Uh, well, yeah. Ish. Yes, they are all COD partners and they all want to play it. However, they all have um, something already booked into their calendars because yeah. CD Projekt Red have bought them in. It's just going to... It would just look flat. And, and Call of Duty is not a small game. It's a game that will be big and will stay big for the rest of the year, 100%. Um, but it would just take a little bit of the shine off it. So it absolutely makes 100% sense to move. There's, there's few games that that a game like COD would have to move for. Um, Cyberpunk is probably one of them. Cyberpunk, the GTAs of the world like that. Yeah, absolutely. Give that a bit of space. I mean, a week... This question's on, is is a week enough when a game that's got 7 million hours confirmed by one of the devs, uh, devs and it's not 7 million, it's like, was it 140 hours or something like that? Okay, one week's probably not enough for a lot of people, but from a marketing perspective, it absolutely gets time to get a week of gameplay out of the way of Cyberpunk so that they can go big with, with Warzone at that point in time. Thoughts, babe? Yeah, I mean, you, you touched all the notes that I was going to talk about myself there, you bastard. Um... But ah. do, what does that say about Call of Duty in general then? Like, do they not see themselves as big as CD Projekt Red and their game launch? Like, I know Cyberpunk is probably one of the, the most ante eagerly anticipated games. I'm probably going to shout out for like the last two or three years. Um, so this is obviously a massive launch. But what does that say about Call of Duty that they don't think they can put their product up against that? Do they think they're the same? Um, obviously it kind of is the same market but they don't think their player base is as strong as they once were because they probably, there, there would have been times where people were changing their game launches to not be around Call of Duty, I know this is only a season launch, it's not a game launch so it's a little bit different in that respect but people who are die hard Call of Duty probably might not, well I don't know, I don't know because every single person's different in terms of that but do the college you not feel like they have the prestige that they used to have 
in terms of game releases? See, I don't, I, I don't think it's that. I, if, if anything, I think it's, it's smart and it's self, self, not realizing. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, self awareness from Call of Duty to know that they are massive and they will continue to be massive. Um, they've just had their big hurrah with Black Ops Cold War, um, but Cyberpunk is more of a special event. It's not your average video game. It's not another title that's come out. It's it's something that has been the most talked yeah. about title for two years, pretty much. Um, yeah, there has been some peaks and troughs where it, it might have fallen off conversation for a bit while stuff was quiet in the earlier days. But but from Keanu Reeves's moment, it's pretty much been nailed on most people's lists. Um, yeah. So I think Activision, and I think it, it would be worse for them to have the obliviousness to go, actually, we're Call of Duty, mate. Nothing can stand in our way. I think for them to go, actually, do you know what? We're Call of Duty, and, and nothing can really stand in our way. However, things could could be a little bit of a block, so we'd need to sidestep. Um, and and why why do we why 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 sidestep? Why stop? Take a sideways movement and then move forward. Why don't we just keep going forward, but at a different angle? So I think it makes sense. Um, that is something that is it's pretty much cultural. I know it's video games, but Cyberpunk's that big. It's pretty much cultural. Everyone is going to be playing it. It's going to be on TV. It's going to be on bus stops. It's going to be on buses if if even bother decorating those anymore in the covid world it's going to be everywhere all the twitch ads are all cyberpunk anyway mm -hmm. now and they will continue to be that for a long long time your pre-rolls and youtube everything so it makes absolute sense for, for me I, don't, I think i actually respect activision a little bit more because it shows you that it's smart enough to go okay yeah. we this this is warzone um effectively which is not new it's it's an old game now it's not it's not in the in in real world but in terms of video games world it's a year old it's old that's it it's dead game dead game no one plays that anymore um but yeah. that's that's the kind of stuff that they've got got to contend with they understand that they aren't something new it's fresh content but it's again it's again it's again it's more of the same and to to, to keep your shelf life as long as it can be you have to be aware of stuff like that so i respect them i respect them stepping out of the way and going do you know what i'm not gonna fuck with that guy <laughs> actually <laughs> i'll wait until he's gone and then i'll just yeah smash it nice yeah. nice I, I respect that i respect that it's good good decision um jump in back into the chat then uh can cyberpunk live up to the hype says tito uh we will yeah. find out in a few days and one person who's a sub will find out as well because they will get a game exclamation mark neutral exclamation mark cyberpunk in the chat um but yeah i would be surprised if it doesn't i hope it i genuinely hope it does if not it's, it's a lot of column inches wasted <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, missing cyberpunk to see the missus uh, family tragic is it a good enough uh, reason to end the relationship <laughs> yeah. oh, do you know what wait until the early re reviews and stuff come out and then you'll know and then you'll know uh where did we get to? Um, uh, unlikely to live up to the hype, says Gary, but you never know. You never know. Uh, you my, think? my girlfriend dumped me when I skipped her birthday for a new Bethesda game release. What a stupid thing uh, to fall out for. <laughs> Welcome to the family, son. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely appreciate that. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I Like I say, I still, my fear, I think the game is going to be incredible. The amount of content In terms of most yeah. people might go, this is incredible. But some people might be just like, it's a chunk, it's a chore. But that's fine. Some people, some people like graphic novels. Some people like novel, like huge encyclopedia-like novels. Some people like a quick read. Some people don't read at all. Everyone has different opinions on things. Some people won't watch films because films is two hours and it doesn't need to be that long. I'd rather watch something. Uh, episodical uh, yeah it's fine it's fine different horses for courses uh, that's my only worry is that it's too much of that so that it alienates a larger chunk of the audience so whilst it therefore underneath is still amazing just the amount of content within that which is a wonderful thing usually it's a wonderful thing that needs to be celebrated but just the raw amount of content could put people off which yeah. which kind of is a shame but it's just it's just a it's, a, it's not 
not a fall, it's just a symptom of society. It just is what it is. Um, but hopefully, it's the side missions that I think people may get a bit pissed off about because the person who played it said they ticked in 145 hours so far. That is obviously a hell of a hell of long time to be able to play games. Uh, I'm like 23 hours into the days gone, and it feels like I've been playing it forever, but I haven't once been bored while I've been playing it because the side missions are a little bit same in terms of finding bounties, so you have to go out and kill people in the same format but like going out and taking out bases and things like that i haven't been bored i haven't felt it being repetition uh, repetitive anytime soon however if you're 145 hours deep and it ends up being like what ubisoft do when you have to cry, like on far cry where you have to go to a base take out the sirens kill the person there then you have to climb up whatever it is to open that part of the map that could be samey same and if you happen to do that for 145 hours it may get a little bit tedious but that that's the hopefully why they delayed the game twice so they could try and iron out the the boring things when it comes to uh, side stories. I hope the side stories are, have got some nice little variety to them rather than it just being the same thing over and over again. But we'll, we'll wait and find out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, this is coming from me, who who my most played games over the last couple of years have all been BRs which is literally just doing the same thing over and over again but not doing the same thing over and over again so yeah it's like I say horses for courses different things for different people some people absolutely love the idea of doing the same things over and over again getting better at it getting faster at it I'm not a speedrunner and I would never be a speedrunner but that's kind of what you do in Battle Royale you get, you, you, you play the same <laughs> thing through to the end but it's a different thing um, so it's hugely hugely subjective um, but yeah I'd like Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it's good. We'll see. We'll find out soon enough. Anyway, I, I imagine the review embargo, if it's not up already, will probably be t today or tomorrow because the game's out on yeah. the 10th. Um, uh, where do we get to? Oh, that also reminds me. Please block those keywords on um, Twitter if you are using Twitter because the spoilers will start to come out. Now, I know some of them got released last week on Twitter, but please, if you are waiting to play this for the first time uh, and have completely... Uh, completely you know, you don't want to know what's happening in the game, please block it on Twitter. This is your last warning because, like Graham said, it's either going to be today or tomorrow that the reviews and spoilers will be coming out. It will be dropping on people's doors anytime yeah. soon. So please block the keywords. And people have proven to be asshats. asshats. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the difference between COD moving out of the way of Cyberpunk, Daniel says, I think it's the difference between the World Cup and a yearly final. Um yeah, I think I think that's the case. I mean, one is a spectacular event, and one of them is something that that comes around uh, pretty often, kind of thing. Maybe not even the yearly final, um, but maybe maybe the qualification stages of a competition that you always watch. But that's the yeah. qualification stages, and then you've got the World Cup in that. That's pretty, yeah. But yeah, I, I get I get where you're going with the um, the metaphor. Yeah, I think that's it. The fact one is one is more of your daily routine not that not there's anything wrong with it you choose for that to be your daily routine you accept it and do it every day but but the other one is something different sometimes everyone sometimes well I something is different so yeah that yeah that makes sense um uh da, 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 scrolling back up um so if i thought an fa cup final every year still gets me hyped i still watch the fa final fa cup final every single year uh, even though that comes out every single year uh, i don't know if the fa cup is just something it's so something to get excited about yeah that's kind of what i was meaning in terms of like i mean not so much the final but more like the qualification kind of stuff because the final is 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 in itself a special event in that sort of sense yeah. it's kind of like um yeah the, something like the qualification stuff because there's multiple rounds of that that's almost like season one two three four and five so if it was like round three of the fa cup versus like watching a world club a uh, world cup event kind of like Say the final, you'd be like, "Well, I watched the World Cup final of the round three of the yeah. FA Cup." It's, I mean, I, I would watch the round round three of the FA Cup all the time because it's there. It's, it's game of football. Of course, I'm going to watch it, but that's that's different. That's different. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Where did we get to? Um, I think Cyberpunk will live up to what people expect from CD Projekt Red. People's personal hype levels are all different, so difficult to say if it will for each individual. I think, I think. Um, the conversation that we had on The Last of Us will show that that's probably going to be the case. I mean, it's. If they nail it and hit it out of the park, um, then I don't expect it to be flawless. Um, the thing with, with the thing with The Witcher is The Witcher Three was successful almost stealthily because um, 
there was a lot of people that weren't really aware of it and it just kind of it was almost like like imagine game of thrones early on it it was one of those things like but a lot of people still weren't aware of game of thrones by the time it had hit season three um so it was kind of it grew into a groundswell and became amazing because people weren't aware of it. But then when people are aware of it and they kind of know what to expect or they have expectations set, I think that's the, the even though The Witcher is a completely different game, people might go into that with expectations set now, whereas people didn't have that same level of expectation for The Witcher, which always makes it harder. Once people have expectations, it's mm-hmm. easier for an unknown property to be um, t- to excel than it is for an existing property to push the envelope if that makes sense. Um, obviously, there's nuances in there in terms of existing properties. It's easier for them to sell because it's an own IP and blah, blah, blah which we have, we know. Um, uh, COD comes out every year. Cyberpunk just once, I agree. Uh, I think it's smart, says KC Dice. Absolutely. This is the perfect example of the downside of a yearly Call of Duty release that they have been bumped temporarily for, uh, for Cyberpunk. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean downside the upside is that they make money off it every year as opposed to just once every few years as well yeah. so swings and roundabouts <laughs> uh, uh cyberpunk's once in a lifetime new cod every year says kc absolutely i'm expecting an immersive cool world with great mission and intricate story i think it'll deliver absolutely absolutely um uh Okay, I'm seeing people responding to Tito. I can't see Tito's comment. Where's it gone? Um, oh, there we go. It's the it's the uh, uh, the Fallout Four one. Nice, nice, nice. Um, epic tear puns. <laughs> uh, uh, exclamation mark Cyberpunk. Ah, oh, is Chatbot dead or is it not? Is it not connected? Ah, oh, it's not connected. Okay. Do I need to generate a token? No, we're fine. We're fine. Exclamation mark Cyberpunk should work for you now. Um, uh, in before Cyberpunk TV series exclusive to Netflix. Wouldn't be surprised. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, Daniel says I would be surprised if that wasn't already in, in the talk stage yeah with with the success of The Witcher as well um, The Witcher Netflix series helped well obviously Cyberpunk but it helped bolster CD Projekt Red to become the most profitable games brand in Europe was it? It was Ubisoft first and then they usurped them eventually at the top and that was partially because of the mainstream success of that so I wouldn't be surprised if that's already in the cards absolutely agree um uh, da, 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 da. uh, Madge says, indeed, it could be Red Dead Redemption Two in quality, but tedious game systems in place could be, absolutely could be, one hundred percent. That's the thing with big games; it can be susceptible to that. They have um, incredible uh, development, incredible visuals, incredible storylines, but can almost try to do too much and can get in the way not always but they can do so it's that's like i said that's my worry that's my worry hopefully it doesn't do that though we'll find out in a few days um uh i have nearly 150 in my new game and we're nowhere near finished developing it says daniel uh i don't think it means uh as much as people think it does um announced the netflix series a while ago mate edge runners i think it was 2020 release oh really i did not know that <laughs> there you go anime though okay um I got Red Dead Redemption uh, 2 spoiled and made me never finish it. See, I never had it spoiled. I just got... That was one game that I did find a bit tedious. I got to, like, the end of Chapter 2, and there's still Chapter 3 to go. So I will come back to it at some point, but not yet. Um, uh, what I really meant with the metaphor was more about the audience size. The World Cup brings viewers who don't watch football outside the World Cup. Ah, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like how more people watch weightlifting during the Olympics but don't watch otherwise. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. It is. It's, that, it's, a, it's a cultural event as opposed to... Yeah. Um, a viewership specific one um i hope cyberpunk is as amazing as it looks from what we've seen i only want the new cod game purely for the campaign i'm still playing the last one um so yeah i wanted to play the last campaign just didn't get the game i was gonna get it was gonna get it was gonna get it and then i was like oh, i'm not, not bothered i mean i did enjoy warzone and i will play warzone again at some point but but yeah today is not that day um tell you what though let's jump ahead we do have one final article and seeing as we've mentioned gta a few times already uh let's finish off with some gta news as this one is written by don peppy at bg247 it says a new nightclub radio station updates and more coming to gta online soon rockstar games has announced that gta online is set to get a brand new underground club called the music locker very soon players that frequent uh, frequent the diamond casino and gta online may have noticed some building works at the location lately uh, as per the developer rockstar games the landmark will soon be getting a little bit of a facelift as a new nightclub the music locker is set 
to open under the casino. Maybe you've noticed the scaffolding and construction going on at the diamond, or if you listen closely, you might hear the muffled thud of a relentless kick drum. At long last, the greatest club that Los Santos has ever seen will be open to the public, the developer wrote on its site. The new gig site will open with a special set from Moody Man and other acts are lined up uh, to headline the virtual music space over the coming weeks and months. Later in the season, Berlin Collective Kind of Music uh, will take clubbers on a journey from sounds of open-air beach parties to the darkest nights in Europe, while Palms Tracks is preparing to bring old-school house, exotic strains of disco, and the latest from the UK underground to his music locker residency later this month. Rockstar has announced that anyone that fancies watching the gigs can access the venue to check the sets out, but exclusive access to the table service in the VIP section is only available to those who own a penthouse in the Diamond Casino upstairs. Be prepared to share a table with the Los Santos Elite and spill drinks and some very expensive shoes. The press release notes, if you're looking to take a break from Los Santos and break into something more tropical, the Music Locker should be the first stop on your next visit to the city. As Fortnite continues to attract art artists for live events, Rockstar is well positioned to start planning live gigs and featuring artists itself. If you're more into the game's radio than dedicated gig spaces, fret not. Rockstar has announced that infamous radio stations will soon be getting an update with more DJ content arriving soon. Emotion, 98.3. Um, the developer promises more news in the coming days. There you go. Nice, 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 nice. Genuinely quite like that. Big thoughts. Uh, they're definitely gearing up for the PlayStation 5 launch point. Um, I think I try to add as much content as they can, and then it makes it more of a... I mean, the people who are playing it all the time on PlayStation 4, if they've got a PlayStation 5, they're instantly going to switch over, aren't they? They just want to get the best. Hopefully, the, the faster loading times will play a massive part in this as well, because that's the only reason that puts me off so much. Um, <laughs> I, I know my... <laughs> Sit there with an aerial shot for 25 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> See, I know my way around GTA Online. It's just the loading times that put me off wanting to play it all the time. It's just... You want, you want to be able to get in and play it, play as much as you can in a short amount of time. That isn't the game for it. Um, but I can't wait to be able to play it on PlayStation. I, even if the loading times are still a little bit long, I'm going to boot up on PlayStation. I want to experience it for a while while it's over there. And having all of this stuff, there's there's a reason why they're making this online uh, for free. They're, they're going to give it to absolutely everyone. Um, obviously, the Red Dead came out on Friday, I think, um, and it was paid. I think it was like £3.50 to be able to play Red Dead online. Um, but this is, this is next level. People still play this game, and it's still... I haven't checked, but it will be in the top 10 games being sold. Um, still, uh, seven or eight years later, there's, this this game is phenomenal. It's just going to keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's the reason why we haven't probably seen a new Grand Theft Auto in such a long time, because the online is it is just a, it is just a game. Do you know what I mean? It's It doesn't need to keep on being swapped and changed. You don't need a... It's, it's a separate entity. It's a game that they can just evolve over time. Like you, like you said, then the Diamond Casino has some scaffolding and someone's programmed that in because they know that a new update is coming. So it's just an ever-evolving world. It doesn't need a new game to be put alongside it. Would it be cool to be able to have the game change and be part of a Vice City, Vice City setting? That would be amazing. Would it be also cool if we could have uh, the, the atmosphere of Los Santos in the early 90s? Yeah, that would also be cool, but there's still millions of people playing this every single day, so there's no need for them data driven wise to change anything else i love that from just make the, the, it evolve over time i love how um i mean they've, they've they always had content there's always new heists and the casino bits have been in there and i've not played any of it it's not really got my attention that much um because it's I, I get what the core of gta online is and I, I and if i spent the time to get into that uh, i'd probably enjoy it but i know what it is it's fine okay I, I know that experience yeah there might be new heist and stuff the experience is kind of the same um it's not a bad thing you you it is su it's successful don't change it but one thing that i've seen or what, what we all can see is it's not just a case of let's plug in new content now uh, they've clearly learned from um from games like like Fortnite and like Warzone and so on, with that their continued service stuff, they will put things in the game that then lead on to something else that comes in the game, which then means something else. And you get in-game spoilers and in-game teasers and, and things already in there. So the fact that there's been scaffolding added to the game, I mean, I, I can't say, maybe someone can correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I can't say that I remember GTA doing that before. Like that putting visual clues as to something is coming um and it's it's nice it's a more modern way of thinking it's it's yeah. it's 
evolution stepping towards the next thing i mean obviously it works to get people talking but just from a, a physical point of like look something is going to happen here gets people interest uh, gets uh, gets people's interest and then and then it goes from there so i like that idea but the biggest thing for me isn't so much that i mean it's good to see them taking that on board and working that into their plans but it's it's the adding the music uh, venue in is clearly in response to seeing Diplo and Marshmello and and whoever that have been in Fortnite um, and had incredible numbers. Uh, GTA has been a cultural shift game. I mean, like we're talking about Cyberpunk making COD move out of the way. GTA is a game that can do that. Um, and the way it can do that is to stay on top of cultural uh, changes and seeing that video games can be a place where people do share those experiences by building in a venue with that specific mindset in mind yeah it is a little bit of copycat uh, taking their ideas but that's what a lot of video games is taking someone else's idea and making it your own and building it making it further so they've taken that idea of having a shared musical environment in game put the gta spin on it and then they can push that forward and, and a game as big as gta uh yeah it's not going to be the family element that you will get in fortnite because it's gta and you're supposed to be over 18 even though most kids that are playing it are not but but uh yeah i i wouldn't be surprised if we do start to see some major major names popping up in there um through gta 5 and then on into gta 6 absolutely speaking of which gary's just dropped us a link in the chat which we might as well quickly jump through this is by mirrored to to share um our enemy it says fans find possible gta6 clue in rockstar's latest video could this mystery be solved question mark uh, fans seem to have pieced together a mystery that may be linked to gta6 finding coordinates to a winding road in virginia that resembles norman ruminals uh, the latest gta online update was announced with a quick teaser from rockstar who didn't give too much away at the bottom of the video however were some coordinates which fans of the series entered into google maps in the hopes of finding an easter egg the coordinates led them to middle mountain trail a winding road in virginia seeming in the middle of nowhere interestingly the road takes the shape of the of the roman numeral six which is vi um Okay, that's an embedded tweet. I'm going to ignore. GTA fans quickly began to speculate that they mis uh, this may be some kind of hint, something to highlight a possible release, perhaps. Many seem convinced of the road's significance and have pointed out that Rockstar are unlikely to have chosen this winding path at random. Over on Reddit, some have suggested that this may mean GTA 6 will be set in Virginia, or at least that an announcement is in the works. After seven years of waiting, fans may simply be becoming impatient, however. Is it possible? Uh, is it, it is possible that Rockstar, knowing their fan base, are just messing with us, and that this teaser is nothing more than a joke to keep us on our toes? Ooh. I mean, obviously with anything, it's, it's a rumour. Take it with a pinch. We had rumours that GTA was going to be set in Florida, a.k.a. Miami, a.k.a. Uh, Vice City last year. Um, I posted a teaser on that, and clearly people are huge on that news because I, that, that was just me just random shit posting. Oh, this looks pretty cool. 150 retweets or something later on. It's like, okay, well, I usually post content that's really good and I get three retweets. That one's just shit posting. They got 150. Fuck's sake. But uh, people are hungry for news but yeah there you go what are your what are your thoughts babe gta6 uh, well i would absolutely love it to be vice city obviously it's my favorite gta game um like i say the highlighted vi i don't know i don't know graham i don't know i think i think that's why they want people to assume it's that because it's the hype level but it also means that it's a massive letdown if it doesn't happen hmm yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would love to see. I mean, I would love to see a, a new San Andreas, obviously a, a version of that. But would do I want to see something that I've already played before, that... or do I want to experience something for the first time again? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, they've, they've, we've we've had the '80s, we've had the '90s, and we've had the 2000s and the nows. So kind of anything in that sense will have been done before. Um, I think the issue with with doing the, the the Los Santos or the Vice City kind of thing is I absolutely love both those. Those two are my favourite two games, which I, I'm saying that like it like it's surprising. Most people will say the same that that are that I've played them all in situ when they came out. Um, Vice City the best soundtrack, San Andreas the best game, just because obviously it built on what came before. Um, but there's a beauty in in GTA Five the fact that it's now. It's everything kids are used to from the yeah. day now in the game. Uh, and I think I've mentioned that before in terms of Red Dead. The reason I don't think Red Dead 
Redemption is setting the world on on fire is because there's a new Bugatti Veyron comes out, then then they'll make the the Bulatti or whatever. It's probably this probably got a different name in there, but something that you can get that's supposed to be the Veyron um, or the Lamborghini or whatever. Uh, Tesla cars might start appearing in it because it's now when they can do it, and you've got your mobile phone which is in it. You don't have mobile phones, you don't have cars. You've got horses and carts in Red Dead Redemption, so you lose a little bit of that real world connection. You can keep that to an extent in vice city obviously your mobile phone becomes an absolute breeze block that you carry around and uh, have a charging pack for less so in uh, los santos okay you have to go to a flip phone um but you, you can you can keep some of that in there it's just it whilst it does resonate they they are very timely whereas gta 5 has the ability of evolving because it's now whatever is happening now we can do that now so yeah yeah anyway tangent and a half um gta 6 uh potential potential but what we do know is there is new stuff coming to gta 5 a nightclub radio station updates and more um like i said partially at building themselves in as a cultural icon for the future the fact that they can have stars and music and events within the game but also as bibi says a new way to welcome in the next generation as well um for those that don't remember gta 5 online uh well gta online will be free for those on the ps5 so you can just download the game and continue as you have been doing before jobs are good in. nice 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 yeah and on that bombshell let's wrap things up i'll jump back through the chat though before we do though um oh yeah i might be finally in fire inspired to finish the story of gta 5 on ps5 says match uh, i'm open for offers on a net netflix documentary cataloging my journey i've been at it since the ps3 do it do it it's good i i kind of had to get my head down and just just ignore side missions and crack on with the story to finish it on the ps3 um but i'm glad i did it was it was it was a good story it's a good story but i kept getting distracted by everything i'm i'm too easily distracted life i'm just gonna just gonna do the oh look look new car i'm gonna follow that oh the shit uh, someone's annoyed me and crashed into me i'm gonna shoot him and now the police are chasing me okay i need to go and get rid of them before i realize it i've driven halfway across the map and i've forgotten what i was doing and I head, I head back and then it all happens again. Um, Mr. T says, can't wait for GTA VI. Exactly. Uh, I'm surprised they didn't try something sooner with Comedy Club, having Frankie Boyle and Ricky Gervais. Yeah, good point. Good point. I mean, that's the thing as well. GTA um, has that in it. It, it. They can do more of that stuff. It's not just about music and, and artists anymore. It's they have... The whole world exists. They could do a comedy sketch. They could... Do a book club or something like that or whatever. Things that you, you that wouldn't work in Fortnite would work in GTA. So it's, it's yeah. a smart move. It's a good cultural move for them. Uh, GTA is one of a select few game series that gets me so hyped, says Gary. It's big. It's big. Um, New York, Los Angeles, Virginia, Kappa. <laughs> and yes, Vice City is still the best GTA. I was listening to GTA... Do you know what? I was, I don't know, well, you can take my word for it. I was listening to uh, a Spotify playlist on the weekend for GTA Vice City. It wasn't the actual, like... Um, audio track from the game which you can listen to on YouTube that's where you usually listen to but yeah it's absolutely the best soundtrack 100% I only ever finished GTA GTA London and GTA 2 old school old school um, some some really good stories uh, Vice City San Andreas which most of them the stories are really good as you go through them to be fair so definitely worth a punt uh, if you've got the time and you know it won't take you as many hours as you need to play GTA Online because that takes all of the hours that you have <laughs> forever um, but we are going to wrap things up thank you everyone for joining us in the chat Lunky thank you very much for the follow Robert Daniel Tharian Drake uh, West, thank you very much for the host. His, his Soka's Disciple, thank you for the follow as well. Much, much appreciated. We are going to come back on the channel within 10 to 15 minutes-ish, though, with the next episode of Masters of the League, uh, which we usually go live with Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. However, um, that is subject to change. It is another birthday week here on Ice Cream Upload, so there may be different content. I mean, don't, don't worry, it means we get some PUBG or something instead. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll sort you out, we'll sort you out, don't worry. Um... But that means there's at least one episode, though, and it's going to happen today. There may be more, but, you know, you might as well just tune in now and get your fix and you sort it for the week. Jobs are good. Nice, nice, nice. Before we do disappear and come back with that, though, babies, is there anything you want to add? Yes, of course. If you do see any video game news knocking around the social media platform of choice, there is two ways that you can get in contact with us. First of all, find us on social media at Ice Cream World across all major social media platforms. Second way, get into our Discord. There is an area in there called The Scoop. All we need from you is the URL, your thoughts and impressions, and we will add our thoughts and impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time tomorrow, Mr. Graham Day? It'll be right on the money at 10 a.m.
Ish. 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 I mean, there is a significant ish on that as well, um, because we are back in the office tomorrow, um, and we will be having the scoop as we usually do back in the studio. It'll still be our socially distanced setup, so it won't be the full studio desk and everything. Yeah. But the studio has been turned off for a month, so expect blue screens and all the rest. So we might not be live <laughs> on the money. We might. I mean, we might be normal we might not we will see we'll see tomorrow the best way to find that though is to uh, just drop a follow on the channel and you get notified when we go live anyway jobs are good and um mad says when's the cutoff for cyberpunk comp entries um well when we draw it so we will draw that within masters of the league we'll we'll, we'll get the um the spin wheel updated and we'll do a final call and draw it live on the stream there so if you haven't um you will need to be subbed and linked in discord before we draw that we will call that out live on stream as we usually do anyway so yeah there you go within that stream the stream that follows this nice 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 uh hey. simplest thing is if you want to if you want to get involved just do it now that way you're in nice bosh bosh uh and if you don't want to then that's fine that's fine uh anyway we're gonna be thank you very much for being here we'll be back in about 10 to 15 minutes with masters of the league episode six million three uh yeah 60 something I don't remember what number it is but we'll be back with it it's fine what is it? 64 64 that's what I said yeah not 6 million 3 so 64 nice, nice. <laughs> anyway thank you till then stay frosty